it's good to see all of you again. Uh, I would much prefer to be in my classroom with you right now than doing things this way, but it is the circumstance in which we find ourselves. If you are not one of my students and are listening to the channel, my name is Henry Van Bemmel. I've been a teacher of uh, physics for 23 years, primarily in an enriched science and math focused program, uh, with my signature course being the Advanced Placement Physics C course, which I teach every fall uh, for the last uh, 22 years and had about uh, 573 graduates, one of the largest Physics C programs going, and this program is highly enriched. So a year ago, I thought maybe I would uh, consider putting my lessons on the internet as I am not too far from being retired as something for people to use. Uh, at the time I decided against it for various reasons. However, with the current pandemic, the beginning of this channel, at least now, will be, will be here simply to support my students during this time when the schools are closed. And depending on how this plays out and how helpful it is, uh, I may consider uh, doing the entire two courses. So anyhow, uh, primarily then for my own students, as our Prime Minister said, you have two primary civic obligations. One is to listen to the authorities, uh, to the instructions that they give us, and the second thing is to conform, is to do the things that are asked of you. And this is a departure, of course, from how we live every day for all of us. I'm almost 60 years old and I've never had any constraints, even those placed on me by my parents, that are as, uh, as tight as perhaps what we're facing just now. But let's understand something, people. <clears throat> we will get through this. There are sunny days ahead. The smartest people in the world are working on this uh, problem right now, not only in the standpoint of controlling the epidemic, but also from the standpoint of finding vaccines, not only for this particular virus, but similar ones as well. I should tell you also that <clears throat> fully 200 of the TOPS alumni are now medical professionals of one kind or another, and there are many others working in technical fields uh, around the world. And so you can be sure that your descendants, so to speak, uh, or ancestors in the TOPS world, uh, are right now uh, part of the group that is working to make things better for all of us. And we can take some pride in that. What can we do? We are not, myself and you so, yourselves, we are not frontline providers. There's nothing at our level of competence that's going to do to make this go away. And so what we need to do now is to take care of ourselves to not be uh, a burden to the system beyond what we would normally be. We can't spend our day focusing on the numbers and dwelling on the negatives and how long this may go on and this, that, and the other thing. To those of you who have family members that are affected directly, uh, family members who are sick and so forth, we all have, you all have our sympathy. But the point here is it's the same as when you go to a hospital and you visit someone who's unwell under normal times. You're not a doctor, so when you go into that hospital room to visit whomever, you're not going to make them well in the standpoint of any kind of clinical thing you can do. Your job is emotional, is to cheer them up, is to give them a reason to keep going. So what often happens though is people don't realize that and they go in there and they spend 20 minutes talking about all the things that are wrong with this particular person. And then they tell that person all of the friends they know who have had a similar problem. And after half an hour they leave. And all we've had is an endless layer of negativism. And that's not what you're there for. Going into all of the discussions, hypothetical or otherwise, of someone's illness doesn't make them any better. Now you can come in and quickly see how they're feeling. Um, have a good look to see if they're getting adequate care. Uh, if there's anything you can do to augment that. In the old days one might be arranged for a television or some other thing to help them while the day's away. But in the end, your job is to make them feel better. It's to make them laugh. It's to make them remember special days that they had together with you. 
that made life worth living. Now today, when you are with your friends and family or the people you live with, remember that. Remember that your parents are worried too. And you can do things for them, not just the things around the house, but we can all get together and make this <clears throat> a positive family experience. You have heard me in class lament the loss of family time because of the getting and spending that we seem to have to do in our current economy. Here's a chance for us to come back together as families, play a board game, play a, do a crossword puzzle, talk about the old days, and otherwise improve and build these relationships in positive ways. I think we'll all be the better for it and make good use of this time. In addition, <clears throat> from your own standpoint, you have this free time. Uh, you can use it to become the best gamer in the world and binge watch YouTube videos and all the rest of it. And it's not that we can't have some recreation. But you can also use this time to make yourself better. You can use this time to read ahead in your textbooks and have a look at what's going on and see perhaps where you can make yourself better depending on whatever happens uh, to this school year. It's up to you. And whether whatever formal way this school year ends, you can still set up uh, things for yourself to make yourself better. You have your textbooks, you have your uh, notes and other things, <clears throat> as well as, of course, the wonderful resource of the Internet, and all these things will make things better for you. Now, what I propose to do, just generally, is I will be doing lessons on topics. Uh, obviously, we can't evaluate, so that won't be happening, but these lessons will be on topics that would be covered in the course, both the grade 10 top science course that I'm teaching currently and the grade 11 tops physics course. And if you uh, <clears throat> can follow along with those, and obviously uh, I will recommend places where you could find uh, questions that you can practice. I will not be giving laborious board notes. Uh, instead, I will illustrate things on a whiteboard, uh, equations and things that are easier. Sometimes there will be pictures. Sometimes there will be... Um, uh, um, PowerPoint slides and so on, whatever is appropriate for you to glean. Now the advantage of course you have with these instructional videos is that you can stop the video and you can play it again over and over as, a nece as necessary to make sure you understand what's going on. And of course through email I'll be happy to entertain your questions and comments. So with that hopefully we'll all uh, get through this uh, for better uh, and when we do get back together we will then uh, sort out uh, our situation. So uh, those of you in grade 11, there will be a, an introductory video that's just going to give specific instructions on how I see grade 11 going forward uh, and also for the grade 10s. And I'll keep those specific. I'll make separate videos for those. I wish all of you the best of health and for your families. Uh, and until we meet again, thank you very much.